Hi there, this is Mr. Lawson coming at you from inside of a rectangle. Now, you might remember about rectangles that it's a flimsy rectangle, that the opposite sides in a rectangle are equal, and it has right angles in all four corners. Well, if we just release the requirement it has to have right angles in the corners, I haven't changed the basic lengths of the sides, so the opposite sides are still equal. Okay, it turns out that just like the rectangle, the opposite sides are also still parallel when I bend them over. This guy is called a parallelogram. And chapter 8 is about quadrilaterals, but the first several sections are all about parallelograms. Now by this time, Mr. Mitchell, who is a fine man, has, uh, and my substitute today, has already passed out a paper to you that has a couple parallelograms on it. And what I want you to do is, as I'm talking here, I want you to mark the congruent parts on the diagrams. And when we start writing properties of parallelograms, you can write them on the back of the handout. You may eventually need some more paper. So please follow along with me. Here we go. Now, here is the parallelogram up at the top. As it says on the handout, it has opposite sides. A, B, and C, D are, are opposite sides. B, C, and A, D are opposite sides. It has opposite angles. A and C are opposite. B and D are opposite. This is the same figure over here, except I've connected opposite vertices and made diagonals. Okay, so it's helpful to have both pictures because it takes both pictures to get all the properties of parallelograms. By definition, the, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So I can put those marks on for beginners, and I would like you to put them on. I'll make them a little bigger so you can see what we've got here. So these are arrows, two arrows each on these guys, one arrow each on those guys, which show the top and the bottom are parallel and the two sides are parallel. Okay, uh, you don't need to make these marks right now, but if I would draw just one diagonal in there, then I could use the fact from parallel lines in an earlier chapter that alternate interior angles are congruent, And since BD is congruent to itself by the reflexive, you might think for a second as to why we have two triangles that are congruent by angle, side, angle. Since they are congruent, that means their corresponding parts are congruent, which means specifically AB and CD are congruent. You will want to put those marks on, just not the diagonal. That BC and AD are congruent, we can also get out of that that angle A is congruent to angle C. Now, if you think about it, since these two angles and those two angles are congruent, that can also lead us to know that this pair of opposite angles are congruent as well. At this stage, you have most of the marks that are going to go on this diagram that show the following properties. And I'm not sure where you can put this. You may need to turn this over now. The properties that we've established just by that little exercise are, well, we know that both pairs of opposite sides, OPP for opposite sides, and there's our parallel symbol, are parallel. We know that we've just established both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. The opposite angle pairs are congruent. Both pairs opposite angles. are congruent. Now, we've got to work a little more to get our next property. 
if I put an X here, and I go ahead and put that on your diagram, and an X here, put it there, and a Y there, and a Y there. Think about what we know by properties of parallel lines about X and Y back from last fall. These guys would be consecutive interior angles for a pair of parallel lines. And we know that consecutive interior angles are supplementary. They add to 180. You might just put right in the middle of your diagram x plus y equals 180 to remind you of that fact. And then the fact I'll write on my list is that consecutive angles And that means any pair are supplementary. Now we're going to need our other picture to get our last property on this list. Our last property says, well, it's a fact about the diagonals. Let's see what we'd be allowed to mark. Let's look at triangle AEB and triangle DEC. Uh, I would know, because alternate interior angles are congruent for the parallel lines again, that that angle is congruent to that one. Also, that this angle is congruent to this one. Remember from this discussion, the opposite sides are congruent. So that gives us AB congruent to CD. Now we're back to the chapter on triangles. Triangle DEC is congruent to triangle BEA by angle side angle. Since they're congruent to each other, all of their corresponding parts are congruent, and that specifically gives us AE congruent to EC and DE congruent to BE. So you want to add those marks and while you're at it you might as well finish it up. There are two more pairs of congruent angles. This angle is congruent to this one. That's angle uh, ECB and angle EAD. And finally I'll put four marks here. Angle ADE is congruent to angle uh, e, B, C. So there's all sorts of angles that are congruent. I may try to zoom in those on those a little bit so that you can see better if I can keep those in the middle. Okay. So now hopefully on the screen you can see a little bit better all the four pairs, one pair, two pairs, three pairs, four pairs of congruent angles over there. We can see the diagonals bisecting each other, and that's our property. Notice how each of the diagonals is cut in half by the other one. So here's our fifth property, and that is that the diagonals bisect each other. Again, I'll adjust the screen back out now that we've got a chance to look at the diagrams there. Okay. That ought to be all right. All right, so here are our properties, and we're going to use these properties. So I'd, hopefully by now you've got these written on the back of your handout or somewhere on your handout, and you may want to pause if you don't. What we're going to, I'm going to do is go ahead and erase and get a couple example problems put up that are like problems in the book, and I will want to see the examples on your handouts as well. So I'm in your book on page 414, and I'm looking at problems, page 
four, fourteen. We're going to look at number four and number six. They pertain to the same diagram. A parallelogram is given to us. Its name is R S T Q. Its friends call it Rusty Q. Anyway, uh, that's a teacher joke. Okay, it asks us on problem number four to say what segment SV is congruent to. And then to say why. How do we know? And the how do we know is going to come off of the list of reasons we've got down on the bottom of my screen here, or on your paper. So on number four, we should have the SV. Now let's think about if you look back at your diagrams, your diagram should show that the diagonals are cutting each other into equal pieces. So we would have the SV is congruent to VQ. The reason you will state is number five there, diagonals bisect each other. And that's what I want to see on your paper when you, as I look at your notes, and what I want to see on your paper as you're doing the problems. One of those will be the reason. The only other thing that will ever be a reason on these problems is sometimes you will be naming some of the alternate interior angles that are congruent. Then your reason would be alternate interior angles congruent. Okay, number six claims that angle TSR is supplementary. I'm just going to abbreviate that, abbreviate SUPP, to, and they want to know to what? Well, okay, let's go find TSR. TSR. That's this whole angle up here. And sometimes when you're trying to do problems like this, the, the diagonals get in the way of what you're trying to see. So I'm just going to go ahead, because this is my last problem for this particular picture, and erase the diagonals. And that's why I always like to have two pictures of parallelograms, one with diagonals and one without. Now, if you think back to uh, the first picture that we marked on, it used to be on the left over here, we showed that we had an X and a Y, and we had an X and a Y. I might have where they're mixed up. And then we wrote X plus Y is 180. Well, that's our situation here. This angle is supplementary to this angle down at T, which would be angle STQ. It's also supplementary to this guy, which would be SRQ. So either one would be a right answer. And your reason to give is that consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay. Now, we're going to do problems 7 through 12 on the same page together here. And then I'm going to turn you loose to do some on your own. Okay, so another parallelogram is given in 7 through 12. JKLM They've drawn in the diagonals. They intersect at the point R. This guy is 2B plus 3. The bottom is 45. The left side is 3A. The right side is 21. And we have angles of 30 and 70 degrees down in that corner there. Okay, now they're going to ask us about a lot of different angles and sides. And I don't really like, as you know, to do these in order. I just like to do them whatever's easiest. If you're trying to find A, which is actually problem number 11, 
you should remember that opposite sides are congruent. If you look at your first diagram, we mark those opposite sides congruent. That means equal. So 3a is 21, and divide, you'll get a being 7. You can get b in exactly the same way on number 12. You've got 2b plus 3 is 45, and if you'll trust me on this, then b is going to end up being 21. Okay, for the angle problems, let's remember that alternate interiors were congruent. So if that's 30, that's its alternate interior, it's 30. If that's 70, that's its alternate interior, it's 70. Okay, that's going to answer some of the questions. Let's see if we picked up any of them. They asked for MJK. Well, yeah, we kind of did answer MJK. That's problem number seven. We answered it because MJK is made up of 70 and a 30, so if we add those, we've got 100. Number 8 asked for JML. Okay, angle JML, that's this whole angle down in the corner. Now, here's where I like having a second picture. Remember, we just established this angle being 100. Well, remember that the angle they just asked for, that JML down here, that whole angle, that's its supplement, so it's got to be 80, so the two add up to 180. Okay, and problem number nine is asking us for angle JKL. Well, JKL, that's this angle up here. Opposites are congruent, so it's 80. So number nine is also 80. And finally, angle KJL, KJL, well, we've done that one already, it's 30. So the answer to your number 10 there will be 30. Okay, this video is getting kind of long. Let's see, 17 minutes. It's going to take forever to upload this guy on YouTube. So what I'm going to do, this will end this video and... You're going to have some problems to do. And let's see. Let me write the assignment up here. On page 415, you are to do 16 through 30. These problems are exactly like the ones we've just done. I want your work shown in the same way. You can continue it on the back of the page if you've got room or start a new page. When you finish that, go to the second video I have for the lecture for today.